I recently had a conversation about digital logic integrated circuits, which ended up discussing how valves were used as building blocks before the advent of the transistor. Looking at our APN4 Laurent indicator from World War II in particular, it's possible to see how several variations of the humble monostable multivibrator or one shot were used within the indicator unit itself. A monostable is quite simply a circuit triggered by a narrow pulse which generates a single wider often variable width pulse in response. Note how the knob on the right of the indicator varies the width of the pulse on the bottom line, whereas the left knob itself varies the actual position of the pulse on the line itself. Here is half of the APN4 Laurent schematic. Note the large number of dual triode valves scattered over the sheet, many of which use in monostable configurations the display pulses on the tube. Next one is the page which covers the type of multivibrator used in the set. It's just one of them. In my experience, World War II US equipment manuals were detailed and in a very high quality, as you can see here. This is my quick sketch of the monostable we'll be using it as an example, and not quite as good, but it does at least show what we want to see. As the circuit has been built in our radar room universal chassis, uh, the HT is only just over 90 volts, means a few of the component values have to be altered to make account of this. Note the EF91 valve to the left converts a relatively small signal from the signal generator to a large enough voltage to trigger the monostable. Here's our test st setup, when you see when it's turned on now. Uh, the HT current will rise to just under 3 milliamps when it's operating. And there we go. These are the two valves, EF91 to the left and 6SN7 to the right. Here's our display again, showing the pulses generated by the monostable. First we'll expand the time-based trace. There we go and operate the control which varies resistor R on the circuit diagram which changes the pulse width as you'll see happening here. That's as narrow as it'll go. Let me take it back up again. There you go. Now let's watch the same thing on a close-up on the scope. And then we'll change the time base settings and expand it again. Oh, that's about it, I'm afraid. There's not much to say about that. Uh, here's the circuit again in case anybody wants to try it again in their own project, knowing that this circuit actually works. Thanks for watching.